project or, or when a human launches a project, he thinks of an end goal, an mission, and then milestone in the process. So for you, with all the things that you're involved in, kind of like that overall vision of helping to save the world, what is the end goal for your life and what are the milestones that kind of fuels your group or the movement that you are um, leading? Say, yeah, we, we achieved something, and let's go forward to the next thing. Yeah. Um, wow. Some big words like existentialism, man. You, there's, there's a lot in that. I, I, you guess our end goal is the fall of Babylon and the end of all wars and poverty and to see people beat their swords into plowshares. You know, but I, I don't, you know, how we get there, I think, is just, it, it's, there's all kinds of different things I think that we. We do, but if you if we believe that that's coming, I think we start to enact it now. So we, we kind of um, um, so I mean I think there's a there's a there's a ton of ways. Cause my, I mean I think when I hear your question, a part of me thinks very locally on my block. You know, I think like what do we do in a neighborhood that's built around factories that moved out and we lost 200,000 jobs and heroin is the biggest industry in our neighborhood. You know. So I mean, I start there, you know, um, and, and, and but I think there's each of us has to. I think we have to talk in real places about like what does it look, what does the kingdom of God look like in Kensington? You know, what does it look like in Shore Hills? What does it look like wherever you are? You know, so um, but then the vision's big. The vision's for transform and restore creation. You know, and, and so that's that's what we're going for. But like Jesus lived in real places like Capernaum. <laughs> We've got like 400 people, you know, so I think that, that's, that's exciting to make sure that we start where we are uh, and, and we realize that we're part of a bigger plan, you know, and so we need to celebrate the that redemptive work happening everywhere. Uh, I think another great place to, to, uh, to point to, too, that's not represented here as, as much is uh, called the Christian Community Development Association. Uh, CCDA. And if you haven't heard of it, um, it's just ccda.org. Uh, and it kind of, the, 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 the way that it's writing is really a civil rights movement. Uh, and, and Dr. John Perkins, uh, like an eight year old you know, contemporary with, with Dr. King, is one of the founders of it. But I think it's the most diverse gathering of the church in North America. And uh, uh, so I, I think that's another really great place to look where people are coming out of real neighborhoods. And uh, uh, so, so those are, there's, there's probably others that you would name. But that's that's one other one that I would name the CCDA. So. Um, uh, new monasticism wasn't um, actually language that we we used on our own as we were starting communities, you know. But for it, it, I think in some ways it's language which um, some folks that have studied church history and theology have put on what we're doing. And I think it's actually kind of helpful language for a couple of reasons. And one of them is that it, it locates some of the renewal and movement that we see happening in the church as something that's happened over and over in history. That every few hundred years, it seems like, our Christianity gets a little bit sick. And we get infected by Babylon. You know, we get infected by the materialism and militarism. And so there's movements to, to rethink what it means to be Christian uh, and to go to the desert and to the margins of, of the empire and rethink how to live in community. Uh, so what I, I think monasticism traditionally has done well is put together belief and practice. Whereas most of evangelical Christianity has, uh, uh, in, at least in the last few decades has really been obsessed with like what we believe right so it's I mean you could probably most of us could say uh, you know a dozen of the core beliefs of, of Christianity but you say so what does it look like you know I think many of the saints and the monastics can show us well it means a peculiar way of thinking about possession we live simply it means nonviolence. it means you know chastity and, and things like that so the, the marks that we identify were just some of those practices, you know. So I, I would say one of the things is to we offer those. I mean, we, this was a big old gathering we had in North Carolina about 10 years ago, where we said, "What are some of the practices that we need today?" And we 
came up with 12. You know, that's not a magic number, but it's what we saw. It's like care for creation, nonviolence, racial reconciliation, hospitality, sharing possessions. So some of those we identified. You know, so I would say like maybe having a group that's like checking in with each other and going like, how are we doing on those? Maybe you come up with some others. You know, um, like confession and things like that. You know, prayer together and stuff. So. Um, and the Common Prayer Book is building on th those cues, you know? And one of the things that we'll be doing this uh, next year, or ne next few years, is creating chapters. Uh, this is the idea, is that we'll create college chapters where there are groups of people that are making covenants together uh, as students around some of those marks uh, and that are doing morning prayer together. And, um, taking some commitments to live simply and to unplug from technology and to uh, do uh, service and hospitality where, where you are on campuses. So um, that, that's kind of coming. And I, I'm, I, I sort of hope that some years from now we'll have these college chapters of folks that are, I don't care what it's called, it's called Nazism or it's called, you know, discipleship groups, but they'll be formed around beliefs and practices in a real place on their campuses. So that's it. Yeah. I've been really concerned about the, the technology that we're talking about here. Like um, you know, just our cell phones that we're all so attached to. Um, I don't know what it's close. Um, but the call time, you know, the, the minerals that are extracted, especially in the condo, and the women and children are dying for these minerals, you know. have a pretty uh, good suspicion of some of the technologies and progress and, uh, and that, that's why I like you know I kind of point to the homage but I, I think that there's something in the pace that they live and, uh, that we could learn a lot from you know and, and but I, I mean I think that there's there's like um, there's folks here in North Carolina and Kentucky that are doing great work around the coal mines you know and faith-based activists and stuff so I think that those things are Good plate, like wherever we are, to see what what are the effects of you know so-called progress and and some of the technologies, and then also like what does it look like in our own lives? I mean, at the end of the day, like what are some of the things that are sucking the life out of us? You know, I mean, one of the things in our community is we, we don't have television prominently. You know, uh, like I mean, sometimes we get one out of the closet, but we keep it pretty locked up. You know, and like the reason kids come over is because we don't have TV. You know, because we cook and paint on the walls. And you know, play games and stuff. So I think some of that unplugging, we can do right where we are. You know, we can uh, create new ways of, of kind of traveling together and, and living more locally. And, uh, uh, but, but even the virtual stuff, you know, I talked about Friends Without Borders. By the way, all of you should go to friendswithoutborders.net and join t tomorrow or whenever you go. But I think also, like, so we can use those technologies, you know, to try to build some, like, somebody called it e-harmony for reconciliation. Okay. <laughs> cool. That's great. You know, let's do that. But like a hammer can be used to build something good, and it can be used to you know something bad. And I think like in the end, um, we we got to be really careful with the technologies that like we don't just end up with virtual community, you know, and virtual movements and virtual uh, campaigns on the internet. Because if we only like somebody said virtual communities like virtual food. If you only have, you know, if you only eat virtual food, you'll die. And if you only have virtual community, you'll be really lonely people, you know? So I think those, whatever the technologies are, the question becomes like, are they moving us closer or further from the kingdom of God coming on earth, you know? And uh, I think particularly um, the technologies of war should really disturb all of us, you know, that over $200,000 a minute are going towards war and technologies of war. Uh, I mean, as everything else is going bankrupt. I mean, that's the elephant in the room when you talk about, you know, healthcare and education and all these things. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, our, the military, $200,000 a minute, like, it's kind of like a bleeding wound, you know? So it's hard to repair everything else if, uh, if we don't do something about that. So, it's Dr. King, right, too. He said, 
country to continue to spend more money on spirit uh, on military defense uh, than on programs of social uplift is approaching a spiritual death. I mean, how much more would you say that today? Do you want to sign after?